Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make an advent calendar powered by an Arduino. In our house, we love Christmas, and one of the ways that we plan on celebrating this year is to use an advent calendar. Advent calendars are anything with 25, in this case, lights that you just check off one day at a time working up to Christmas. And in this case, we're just gonna be turning one light on each day, and then the last day is the star. All right, let's make this thing. I had a beautiful piece of walnut that was one inch thick, but not big enough for my project. So I resawed it in half on the bandsaw. I ran one side of both of these pieces through the table saw to get one clean edge for a glue up. Then I just added some glue and laid these pieces in the clamps. I pressed down on both of these pieces to push them against the bar clamps to try to keep them as flat as possible. They weren't perfect, but it was pretty good. After it dried, I took them out of the clamps and then put together this template that I would made in Illustrator. But before I added the template, I tried to flatten out these pieces using a hand plane. I ran into a little issue here and I want to explain it just because it might help you guys if you make something like this. I don't have a resaw blade on my bandsaw. I thought what I had would work, but the fact of the matter is the blade bent a little bit while I was pushing the piece through because it's not the correct kind of blade. And because of that, the cuts on this wood are not straight. They have a little bow in the middle of them. Originally, I didn't think that was going to be a big deal. I would just send them through the planer to flatten them out, but the thickness of this wood is smaller than what my planer can plane. So unfortunately, I can't crank the planer down to actually flatten this piece. If I had a drum sander, I could send it through there and that would flatten it out, but I don't have one. I tried to use a hand plane to get it as flat as possible. That's not really working. So I'm just gonna have to go with some cup on these pieces. It's really not a huge deal. This is just a quick decoration, but if you were gonna try to do this to make furniture out of, you definitely wanna get the correct blade and make sure you have another way to flatten these boards. I sprayed a light coat of spray adhesive on the back of the template and then put it on the piece of wood in the corner to try to save as much of the rest of the wood as I could. I ran it through the bandsaw and tried to cut as close as I could to all the lines. I followed the same process for the star, but I used maple instead. I cut out a smaller chunk, but I also had to resaw this piece to get it about the same thickness as the walnut. Then I put on the star template and cut it out. I drilled out all the holes in the template using the drill press. If you had a CNC, this would be a good place to use it, but I know not everyone has access to one. For the most part, the template peeled right off, but what didn't come off came off when I sanded all the pieces. While I'm doing that, I want to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Casper. You've heard me talk about them a million times because they are awesome. True story, I actually went on vacation recently, slept on a different bed, and my neck hurt, my back hurt, it was awful. I came back and slept on my Casper for one night, and I was all good. They're a combination of memory and latex foam, so they're perfectly squishy and perfectly bouncy. You can even try it out in your house for 100 nights, and if you don't like it for any reason, they will give you your money back and come take it away. So there's no real risk to try them out, so you should definitely give it a shot. Go to casper.com make, use the code make, and you get $50 off your first mattress. I used another piece of maple to make a stand for the tree. I traced the outsides of the trunk and figured out the area that needed to be hollowed out so the tree could set down in it. Using the drill press, I drilled three holes to remove most of the material. I used a utility knife to break the grain around where I wanted to chisel out, and then just chiseled out the remaining area. I also chiseled a slight bevel on the bottom of the trunk so that I could force it down into the opening without using any glue. This will make it easier to store. I sanded it and then did a test fit and it was nice and snug. I used CA glue to glue on the star just to save some time and then put in the LEDs. I used hot glue to hold these in place. If it comes loose, you can always hot glue or CA glue them back in place in the future. I had some extra wire at the top so I just trimmed it off. Then it was time to hook up the Arduino and the button. I've got the electronics mocked up here and I just want to show you what's here because there's really not much. I have a button and every time you click it, it just adds one to a number, which is going to be our day counter. That is attached to one pin on this Pro Trinket, which is a small, inexpensive Arduino compatible board from Adafruit. I've also got a five volt power supply that's going to run in and power the whole thing. And then the LED strip just plugs into a couple of other pins. That's all there is to it. Now I just have to wire this stuff up and mount it on the back. I cut a small piece of perf board and then soldered on some female header pins to make a socket for this Arduino. That way it's not permanent. I soldered on all of these pins and then just added the electronics in a permanent position just like I had them on the breadboard. I plugged in the trinket and it was ready to go. I wanted to hide the wire that was coming from the power adapter so I drilled a hole in the base so the wire could feed all the way underneath. To have it go out the backside, I used a file to make a little groove that it would fit in. You could get really clever with where you put the button for this thing, but I just hot glued it right out of sight on the back so you can reach up around it to click it. The last thing was to add several coats of spray lacquer to this, which makes walnut look beautiful. 
Other than the little bit of bow in the wood that I mentioned earlier, I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. The cool thing about using RGB LEDs like this is that you can program them to do anything you want. I've got a little bit of a flicker color change going on between them and the top one is pure white, but you could set them to any color that you want. You could have them animate in any way that you want. You have a lot of options. I will say that the LEDs that I used in this case are kind of expensive for this particular application. I already had them that I was gonna use for another project and I just decided to use them here instead. But there are much cheaper options to use in a case like this. And if you get some LEDs that don't have a diffuser on them like these do, you could just put a little bit of hot glue on top of the LED and it'll work about the same. I hope you like this project. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And whether you celebrate Christmas or another holiday, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy your time with your friends and family and be safe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.